Hello my friends and channel subscribers, Greg here from Brisbane, Australia with another uncut, unedited, noble video. Recently I posted a short video that I uh, notify all my subscribers that I will be making series uh, of videos about electric cars and today's video is about charging and everything to do with charging. So first of all I would like to talk about current technologies uh, of charging and uh, why we have different standards and how to go about it and then I'll discuss speeds and everything else. So stick around and feel free to fast forward if you're not interested in one of the subjects or if it's so clear to you that you don't want to listen to it. Otherwise, um, here we go. So let's start with um, charges. What charging options you've got if you've got an electric car? You can charge from your home um, PowerPoint, which is um, what they call slow charge. You can put dedicated charger at home. If you've got one phase, it's one set of charging capabilities. If you've got three phase electricity, it's a different set of charging capabilities. However, it's all limited. And soon I explain why. Then you've got industrial charges that you see uh, in commercial charges and, and shopping centers and all that. They range from seven kilowatts all the way to, I think, 350 kilowatts right now. Let's talk about uh, standards and limitation first. Um, so to understand charging, first of all, we need to understand batteries and then we understand why charging is so slow or so fast and a little bit of uh, electrics. So I won't bore you with uh, too much detail, but our grid in Australia is 240 volts and your normal uh, general PowerPoint on the wall uh, can handle up to 10 amps. That makes it 2.4 kilowatt of charging. So you people asking how fast can you charge battery of your car? Uh, I don't believe anyone drives in uh, and makes battery empty. But let's say if you need to charge half of your battery and average battery is between 40 to 60 kilowatts. So think you're charging 2.4 kilowatts an hour, right? So 10 hours or your normal, I guess, uh, uh, in active time, you can charge 24 kilowatts and in most cases, it's a half of the battery. Most of the people drive between 20 to 60 Ks in the cities and average consumption between 14 to 20 kilowatts an hour. So let's say if you're driven 50 kilometers and your car consume 20 kilowatts an hour, you need uh, only 10 kilowatts and you can charge up to 24 kilowatts in 10 hours. So if you don't have any other means of charging, you've got private house, you can easily charge your car from your uh, local power point. However, if you uh, live in a, uni in a complex of units or um, you don't have access to a normal general power point, you most likely will be charging outside of your premises. And here's where it gets a little bit confusing. We've got couple of different cables or standards of uh, sockets and I'll explain them in a second and also we've got different speed of charging let's talk about uh, different speeds of charging first so we understand why your battery cannot be charged uh, from the normal mains in a fast way so the batteries in the car they are DC and uh, electric electricity in your uh, in, in the PowerPoint it's AC so your car would have inverter built in to convert AC to DC to charge your batteries and that's the biggest limiter of charging from normal PowerPoint because all fast charges out there that charge your money uh, for fast charging they are all DC so basically it speaks in a native language to your batteries otherwise you need to go through the car's inverter and doesn't matter how much your uh, circuit can handle you cannot charge faster than inverter in a car can convert from ac of uh, power point to dc which our batteries uh, uh, are so your local power point if you use the um, charger provided with the car would be 2.4 kilowatts right and you can calculate speeds of charging depends on the battery size uh, size of uh, battery in this car is 64 kilowatts so i need approximately 
um, I guess uh, two and well one and a half day to charge for battery but again uh, I'm not charging at home because I've got access to other charges and secondly if I do need to charge at home I never would make it from empty to full so the question is how to how do you live with an electric car easy I never felt any range anxiety or a problem with charging I guess we all adapt to what we've got the second bit is um, faster charges you've got two types of uh, main sockets I, I will leave Mitsubishi and uh, Nissan aside because they plug uh, in hybrids and Nissan leaves a uh, uh, full electric car with different standards but that stand kind of slowly dying off so main two standards um, of charging would be type 1 and type 2 for short or type 2 uh, sometimes called CCS so uh, some of the charges uh, AC charges out there are type 1 which is uh, plug looking like this and some of the charges out there like this so that's type 2 and this is the uh, adapter one two uh, type two to type one to type two and if you don't have that adapter i suggest strongly to buy uh, one because most of the public charges would um, not provide this and you need your own so if you're interested in buying i buy all my stuff from um, amazon i put link down below and also i recommend to buy um, type 2 to type 2 cable why because out there you've got a lot of stations that provisioning you charging your car but they're not giving you cable or they may give you cable but because of the overuse of that cable the cable is uh, broken not functioning and then it's not accepting charge the car would not accept charge so it's a good practice to have uh, um, cables of your own and I said there's a couple of different adapters but if you would like to be safe you need um, two cables and one one cable and one adapter or two cables so this is type 1 to type 2 and another cable type 2 to type 2 to connect to public um, infrastructure so let's open the charging port and I uh, show you um, what is inside and where do you plug type 2 and what's the difference between AC charging and DC charging so when you open the port you've got two covers usually in a car if it's not uh, Tesla Tesla is a different thing and I don't want to specifically talk about Tesla because they are doing their own thing the other brands um, provide you with two plugs like that so one would be as I discussed type 2 so here and type 2 just a second I will just put that here in type 2 you will plug your uh, what I call slow industrial charger that would be 7 to 11 kilowatts of charging depends on the type of inverter you've got in a car uh, I think inverter in this car is 7 kilowatts so it doesn't matter what capacity of electrical uh, uh, provision I will have an AC charger this will charge only at seven kilowatts, so it's and it's it's faster than you would charge at home from a standard power point, but it's slower than DC charges. DC charges uh, look a little bit different, and DC charges could be almost any speed from 30 kilowatts all the way to 350. And the reason why they're fast because they took in DC they charge in batteries and in, in DC and they don't need conversion so as much as you can supply would be cramped in the battery um, considering that car supports it so this car supports I think up to 85 kilowatts uh, fast charging some cars support 150 some 300 so it depends on your model so AC charging that goes in a CCS2 or type 2 plug would have between 7 to 11 kilowatts and if you go DC you unplug the bottom one and there's a big connector that has uh, this one and that one in one socket you plug it in and that will jam in DC charge hopefully I didn't confuse you much um, so you've got AC and AC plus DC charging so AC slow charge DC fast charge and then you got AC public stations that use 
CCS2 or Type 2 plug and Type 1 plug. So you do need that adapter. In a nutshell, um, it's not that complicated and I believe if you, if people ask me how do I deal with charging, I guess I deal it with um, in the same way as we dealt 20 years ago when we had all those fancy Nokia phones and we had the uh, uh, charging battery once at two weeks. And if someone would tell you that you need to charge your phone every night back then, you would be laughing at them. Today we all accept that we need to charge phone overnight. I guess uh, when you got petrol or diesel car and you move into electric and you ask me, hey, how do you deal with range anxiety? I don't have it because electricity all around me and I can easily plan my um, day and week, especially when battery lasts for, uh, to me, uh, between 450 to 500 Ks and I drive only approximately 300 to 400 Ks a week. So battery is uh, larger than a, uh, uh, my consumption of electricity in a week time. And um, there's a lot of public charging infrastructure that you can recharge the whole battery within um, an hour or two. So it's not a big problem, especially uh, in my case, when I go to shopping center, my lo local shopping center has a, a charger. And by the time I finish my uh, shopping, my car is charged with what I used in the last week. So I do shopping once a week and charge my car once a week. So, and I'm not promoting electric cars. I'm just uh, trying to help those that still either don't understand and would like to understand how car is getting charged and what uh, and how to integrate electric car into your normal daily life and I'm pretty sure uh, it will be a lot of comments with um, you know correcting me and stating uh, their own cases I'm looking forward to all your comments because I literally um, love helping people and also I'm trying to understand what other um, I guess challenges people having with electric cars or what um, beyond you know personal choice and uh, finance what is impediment to uh, move from petrol and diesel to electric I'm looking forward to all your comments but for now thank you so much for watching stay charged